Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Raka Kodash. I want to say double honors to the elders and apostles, chiefly of Great Millstone, who I've learned this truth from. Peace and salutations also to the brothers that are came on down, who are pushing this truth out in all sincerity, diligently doing the work of the Most High, Yahweh. I also want to say Shalom to the women and children who may be listening, the Israelites scattered abroad. Pray this lesson is edifying through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Shai. So I wanted to do a uh, video um, based off a uh, an article that I came across earlier today. Um, and just thought, you know, as it's concerning uh, the state of, of women uh, today during this um, this uh, pandemic, uh, that that's going on. Uh, I wanted to put some scriptures together and 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 hopefully get some uh, edification or provide some edification out there for those that may be listening. So the article I'm gonna pull it up quickly um, is in the New York Times, and it reads: uh, "Jobless selling nudes online sti and still struggling." So OnlyFans. Uh, a social media platform that allows people to sell explicit photos of themselves has boomed during the pandemic, but competition on the sites means many won't earn much. So because of all the uh, the job loss based off the, uh, the lockdowns and everything like that, people losing their jobs, a lot of women have decided to uh, create an OnlyFans account because they sort of, I guess they, they feel that if they sell their, their new pictures that, you know, men will be thirsty enough and they'll just earn their money that way. And uh, the article goes into uh, this woman in particular, um, who I believe is an Israelite, uh, given the name, I believe it's Savannah Benavid, uh, Benavides. I think I said that right. Anyway, um, it's saying that uh, this Savannah stopped working at her job as a medical biller in June to take care of a two-year-old son after his daycare shut down. Needing a way to pay for her bills, she created an, only, uh, an account on OnlyFans, a social media platform where um, users sell original content to monthly subscribers um, and started posting photos of herself nude or in lingerie. Uh, so Savannah... Uh, made $64,000 since July, which um, is not enough to take care of her uh, her own bills, but to help her family and friends with rent. And... Okay, so anyway, with that, she's she's doing well with with the site. You know, she you know, depending on the pictures you post and and the the fan base that you gain, you know, you're you're you can earn a lot of money from it because there are a lot of uh, sex deprived men out there, you know, but what I wanted to focus on, because I was reading through this, because there's, there's many women that are uh, doing this now. What I wanted to focus on was this part of the article, right? It's like, yeah. um, and I'll, I'll post this article in the, uh, in the description so you can read it for yourself. Um, Aha, right here. So this part. So it says creators can also be subject to capping, a practice in which users take unauthorized screenshots or recordings and then share them elsewhere on the internet. So, you know, where women feel or believe that their, their information is going to be private. No, 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 no. you got other people that have other ideas. Because they want to make money too. But they're going to make it off of, of these women. So that's Savannah that's doing well. It's only going to be a matter of time before somebody starts taking screenshots or, or videos and uploading them to, you know, to the internet. Could Lord knows where, where they could end up, you know. But the next part, it says OnlyFans creators have also received death and rape threats on social media. Now that rape threat... Is, is one that they should take easily because it says in the scriptures that, you know, if you don't have the covering of the Most High, you're going to be, you know, troubled in those days. 
you know see what i'm saying so there, there's a scripture matter of fact i'm gonna i'm gonna get it so it says uh let me go to the book of isaiah so in the book of isaiah chapter 13 verse 16 i believe uh, yeah i'm gonna start at 15 i'm gonna read down so everyone that is found shall be thrust through and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword their children also shall be dashed into pieces before their eyes their house shall be spoiled or the houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished so that's what that is uh you know <laughs> rape threats you know what i mean like it is prophecy that if you're not under the covering of the most high it's going to be bad out here for you you know and it's already starting to look that way because these women went on to only fans thinking that they were going to get a, a, a easy payday you know because they've been at ease these women you know but there, there's a judgment for that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to the scriptures and i'm just going to start from from the the beginning um just to sort of put some uh just get some scriptures uh out there so i'm gonna start from genesis chapter three uh i'm gonna start from Verse. Uh, I'll start at verse sixteen, and uh, this is after Eve was beguiled by the serpent, and now the Most High is is um, basically dishing out her punishment. And he says, "Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply it, multiply thy sorrow, and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children." And thy desire shall be unto thy husband, shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And that's not talking about ruling over you with an iron fist or uh, in in an unrighteous way. You just got some some pooky and ray ray just being all kinds of of demon towards you. This is being uh, in, this means in in rule um, rule over you in righteousness. You know, so it ain't out there to, to you know adam wasn't being a nigger to to eve he, he was doing it in righteousness okay so the uh the next scripture i want to i want to pull actually is the uh the actual order that the most high set because obviously from eve going off you know the most high made her subject unto to adam so the next scripture I'm going to get is in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. And this goes into the order of, of how the Most High wants things. And it reads, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Shai, the anointed. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the anointed is Yahweh, is the Most High. So the order is Yahweh. Yahweh Shai, man, woman, child. And that's the order from the Most High. Okay, so that's the order that the Most High wants everything in. What ended up happening is during the uh, the curses of Deuteronomy, which is where we went off as a nation of people, stopped following the commandments of, of the Most High. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 56 reads the tender and delicate woman among you which would not have ventured to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness because back then our women were delicate they were tender they were beautiful their beauty was was renowned you know everybody knew about the israelite woman beauty but it reads her eyes shall be evil towards her husband or towards the husband of her bosom and towards her son and towards her daughter so that's where it all started to go wrong. We fell off as a nation of people and it just went from bad to worse. So what ended up happening is the woman, you know, through the ages, um, 
we went through slavery, you know, and then if you look at slavery, at, at things that happened during slavery, you know, as far as Jim Crow, um, the women's rights movements and everything like that, the woman sort of was left to her own devices and, and was put in a position where she was over the man. And that brings me to my next scripture, uh, which is in the book of Jeremiah. So I'm going to go to the book of Jeremiah. Uh, I'm going to go to chapter 31. I'm going to start at verse 22. And it reads, uh, How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For Yahweh have created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. So this is going into your women's rights uh, movements. And you can you can look at history, uh, the women's rights, um, or the women started fighting for their rights in the 1800s. Um, but I think it really started to take off uh, in the 1940s during World War II, where uh, the women would, would work in the factories. Um, you can see some of the images um, that they, when, when you see anything regarding feminism, you'll see the, uh, the woman with a spanner or a ratchet and she's doing her arm like uh, flexing her muscles. Um, if if you sort of get the uh, the image, um, but yeah, that that was around the time that the women, you know, that prophecy was coming into order where a woman shall compass a man, and then from then, you know, the women have been fighting for equal rights and everything like that, and now it's it's gotten to a point where the women uh, are even starting to you know, come with terms like uh, toxic masculinity. You know, they're trying to uh, degrade men. You know what I mean? But the Most High set the order. So that there's going to, you know, be set all right. When, when the Most High returns, that's going to be put back in order. Women are going to be put back in order as they should be. And it leads me to, um, to a scripture um, or, or in the book of Esther. Uh, with Queen Vashti, uh, Vashti, I believe it. Matter of fact, let me, uh, just for edification's sake. So in Esther, the first chapter. Um, yeah, so this is um, the King Ahasuerus. Um, basically, he commanded uh, to bring the Queen Vashti uh, before him so he could look at her beauty. Um, and I'll, I'll read from verse 11 uh, and it says to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princes her beauty for she was fair to look on. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore, the king was wroth and his anger burned in him. I'm going to jump down to verse 15 because uh, this is what basically transpired says, what shall we do unto the Queen Vashti according to the law? Because she had not performed the command of the of the King Ahasuerus by his chamberlains. I'm going to jump down to 17. Uh, verse 17 reads, For this deed of the Queen shall come abroad unto all, all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes. When it, sh uh, when it shall be reported, the king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of this deed of the queen, thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. Uh, I'm going to read verse 19 to, and then uh, speak on it. And it says, If it please the king... Let there go a royal commandment from him and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before the king, uh, before King Ahasuerus uh, and let the king give her royal state unto another that is better than she. So when the king commanded Queen Vashti to come so he could look at her uh, beauty and and you know show her off basically she was like nah I ain't going and uh, because of that what the king did he, he didn't want 
the, the women of the land to get the same idea as Vesti and it caused an uproar in the peop with the people. So what ended up happening is the king basically created a law where she was uh, banished from the kingdom. You know, she was banished. So she was set free. She was let, let go, basically, you know. And that, that sent a message out to all the women not to, to be out of order. You see? And uh, there's a proverb, actually, uh, I want to read. In the book of Proverbs uh, 14. And one, it says, Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. So, as you can see, you know, the, the Proverbs even tell you that a wise woman, and that was a wise thing uh, that the, the king Ahasuerus did by banishing her away. You see? So, what ended up happening uh, when, you know, this was left unchallenged, unchecked? I'm staying in the book of Proverbs, um, and I'm going to go to the chapter 30. And I'm going to go to verse 20. And it reads, Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. So, you know, women do all kinds of, of wickedness. And I'm not just pointing out uh, the women because, you know, men are, are equally responsible um, by the music that we've portrayed, you know, the way we've treated our women, the way we've done all kinds of, of evil towards our women. You know, the women have, have built up, a def you know, some sort of a, um, not a defense, but it, it's almost like they mimic what the behavior that we displayed. But the downside with the women mimicking the, the behavior that we've displayed is that they've taken it 10,000 steps too far. So we have to uh, advise you on, on you know, the things that, that will come if, if you don't repent and come back to the Most High. You know, keeping his law, statutes and commandments and, and repenting. Uh, so for uh, Proverbs 23, which is the next scripture I'm going to get into. And uh, I'm going to start 27. It says, for a whore is a deep ditch and a strange woman is a narrow pit. You know, so women uh, have become whores. Like... You know, when you're jumping from man to man to man to man, you know, and, and you're wiping your mouths and, and you're acting like you, you've done no wrong or, or, you know, it's not a big deal. You know, it's it's definitely a big deal. And the reason it is a big deal, because uh, you're supposed to have one husband, the, the man you lay down with, you know, uh, for the first time is the man you you are supposed to stay with that that is your husband because when you lay down with a man uh and 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 I'm t referring to sex you know it's marriage you're married in the eyes of the lord it doesn't necessarily have to be a piece of paper to say you're married if you lay down with a woman and there's there's plenty of scriptures that can back that up i won't go into that cuz that's a completely different topic um but in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and, and 17, this is what it says. It says, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. So we're not to be whores or sodomites. And that's both sides, you know, that's men and women. We're not supposed to be that. We're, we're, uh, we're a, a, a beautiful people when, when we're in our righteousness. But when we're in our wickedness, yeah, we're, we're definitely off big time. Um, the next scripture I want to get is uh, Ephesians um, chapter 5, verse 22. Uh, and just like it says in, in the book of Genesis, the uh, third chapter, her um, 
her desire should be unto her husband. Uh, Ephesians 5 and 22 says, wives, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Because that's what you're doing. You're doing it for the Lord. You ain't doing it just because uh, it's a chore. You're doing it because you love your husband and you're doing it because you love the Lord. If you say you love the Lord. But what ends up happening is a lot of women will be offended by that. Well, why do I have to submit to to a man? You know, I can I can have any man I want. And that's that pride. You know what they say about pride? Go before destruction, you know. Um in the book of Zechariah, chapter Salakia. So I'm just uh I know I'm jumping around. I just wanna sort of get all these scriptures out. Um not make it uh, too long of a lesson um, but uh, the book of Zechariah chapter 7 verse 11 and and this is basically what what's happening uh, at the moment it says but they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear because they don't want to hear when the man's trying to tell them to uh, get their shit together to come back to the Lord to repent to fear Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, because judgment is about to unleash on this earth. And if you women don't realize what's about to transpire, don't worry, I'll bring out the scriptures and you'll you'll see what I'm I'm getting to. Uh the next scripture I want to get to is uh the book of Jeremiah again. Uh and I'm gonna bring out chapter four, verse twenty-two. And it says, For my people is foolish, they have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. So the men of the Lord who are out here on the highways and hedges and on the internet, telling you to repent, telling you to uh, to to seek the Lord while you may be found, to get the knowledge. A lot of people turn their ear from it, and they have no no knowledge. They want to be, you know. I, like they got some sense and like they know something about the scriptures, but they don't know. They don't know anything. You know, when you, you learn the truth, the way it's supposed to be taught, you have to come into it as a, uh, as a newborn baby. I myself, I'm still learning, you know, and most high willing, you know, my works will be, you know, accepted by the Lord. But if not, then that's just the way it is, you know, but our people are just wise to do evil. And they're, they're masters at being evil, our people. And the women, especially. Okay, so I'm going to go to the book of Isaiah. And I'm going to read Isaiah 3 and 16. And, uh, and this is that pride that I was talking about with women. And it says... Uh, Moreover, Yahweh saith, because the daughters of Zion uh, are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. And because of you, you, you know, you, you want to be out there just proud and stretching your neck and winding your neck and all this other stuff and can't nobody tell you nothing. Verse 17. Therefore, the Lord will smite thee with the scab, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and Yahweh will discover their secret parts. Okay, so why do you think a lot of our women nowadays wear wigs, wear weaves and everything like that? It's because you're cursed, but that even that doesn't stop you from being proud. You want to sit there and you want to, you know, act like you're, you know, you're just... God's gift to the earth, you know what I mean? But a lot of you are just way out there. It's time to wind it in, man. It really is. You know, a lot of you, you know, when when a man of the Lord is is trying to is trying to talk to you and and tell you to repent and and get you get you right, you know, to to try and save your life from the judgment that's coming, you want to act like you know more than them. You know, you want to you want to uh you want to teach the, the elders and apostles something like you know something you know but there's a scripture for you on that 
uh, which is in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. And it reads, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Okay? But to be in silence, meaning shut your damn mouth. And I'm a precept that as well. And the precept, uh, if you look in the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9. Matter of fact, let me get it real quick. Just so you think I'm, I'm not taking things out of, out of context. Let me show you how the scriptures are, are supposed to be read. It says, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So you come back in as a newborn baby because you don't know anything. What you think you know. And then verse 10 says, For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So what I just read in the book of uh, Isaiah Salakia in the book of First Timothy, chapter two, verse twelve. There's a precept to that in the book of First Corinthians, which I'm going to pull now for you, which is First Corinthians, chapter fourteen, verse thirty-four, and it reads, "Let your woman keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience." As also saith the law. So these are not my words. These are the words of the Heavenly Father. He's, he's given us these instructions. To, to show us the way. To guide us. Okay. And if you remember. You know. It wasn't Eve first and then Adam. It was Adam first. I'm going to get the precept on that. So in the book of uh, 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 13, it reads, For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Verse 14 says, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Okay? The worst transgression of the law? Sin. Exactly. So woman sinned first. Okay? Matter of fact, I've got a precept on that too. So, in the book of uh, Ecclesiasticus or Syrac, the 25th chapter, going to Ecclesiasticus chapter 25, verse 24, and it reads here Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. Because what's, you know, what's the uh, punishment for sin? Sin, uh, death, you know. So these are just scriptures that I'm just firing off. But um, I'm going to get a couple more and then I'm going to close out. Because what I wanted to do was just sort of uh, go into the uh, the uh, coming judgment. That, that's going to be coming out, uh, you know. Um, and I wanted to make sure that that was, that was clear. Because that's the main point of, of this um, this lesson that I wanted to bring out was the uh, the judgments that are coming. Uh, so I'm going to go to the uh, the book of Second Peter, and I'm going to start at chapter three. I'm going to read verse three. Okay, so it says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying. Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation, of the creation. So a lot of people think, well, you know, you men have been out here constantly talking about how the law is coming back to do this and do that. And ain't nothing happened yet. So I'm just going to keep being wicked. So I'm going to jump down to verse nine. And it says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So the reason he hasn't 
judged this place yet. It's because he's giving you the opportunity. It's called grace to get your stuff together, to learn and understand the ways of, of how you're supposed to act according to his will. And then, you know, you know, determining whether, you know, you're, you're worthy to, to be, uh, to receive salvation, you know, and it says not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want anybody to perish and he's long suffering. He's long suffering, meaning he's just allowing it to, 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 to go on for a long time. This suffering that we're at this affliction that we're experiencing, he's allowing it to just continue so we can get ourselves all right. So we can learn, so we can wake up out of our sleep. But some people they don't want they don't want to know, uh, especially uh, women, you know. And this is not a, a women bashing campaign. This is just, you know, we love you as well, you know, and we want you to to make it. But a lot of you ain't gonna make it because you're you're too proud. You're too far gone. But this is this is a plea to you to to try and get yourself together, you know, as a brother, you know, talking to a sister. You know, we need that covering from the Lord because times are about to get rough. You see all these prophecies being uh, fulfilled in, in the news, everything you, you look at. So the next scripture I want to get is in the book of Isaiah. Um, and it's the 32nd chapter and 10th verse. And it says, uh, actually, I'm going to start at the ninth verse. And it says, uh, rise up, ye women that are at ease. Because a lot of you, you know, you ain't got a care in the world. So I'm going to start that again. It says, rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vintage shall fail, and the gathering shall not come. Tremble. Ye women that are at ease, be troubled, ye careless ones, strip you and make you bare, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. You know, many years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail. And what do we see here? We see the vintage failing because, you know, there's people that are, are taking screenshots and, and, you know, taking uh, videos and uploading them to the to the internet, so people, you know, the competition out there is is more fierce because there's more women, you know, that are that have jumped on that that bandwagon to try and survive in in the, these times. I mean, it's it's absolutely mad if you think that you know this prophecy isn't speaking to you. You know, you need the Lord. Only fans account ain't gonna save you from what's coming. You know, because when the markets crash, money ain't going to be no good. You know, money ain't going to be worth the paper it's printed on. So all that boasting and bragging about, oh, I got money, I got this, I'm chasing the bag. That's that's for nothing. That's going to count for nothing. You know, so hear the, heed the warning that the Most High is trying to uh, trying to give you. I'm going to bring out um, two more scriptures and then I'm going to close it out. Uh, yeah, I'm going to close it out. So um, the last scripture I'm going to uh, bring out concerning um, the, uh, the judgment of women um, is in there, there's plenty more that I could bring up. But as I said, I don't want to make it a, a, a long lesson. So. I'm going to bring up Matthew chapter 24, verse 19. And uh, it reads, uh, And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But I pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor even nor ever shall be so lucky let me read that again 
uh, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So there won't be a time like the time that we're about to go through. There's never been a time like the time we're about to go through. And if you're with children in that day, like this woman, uh, she's doing this to support her two-year-old son. You know, it, it, you know what I mean? It says, whoa, whoa means destruction to them that are with child. You know, it's, if you ain't got that covering of the most high, you know, you, you, you are in some serious trouble. Some serious trouble. You need to get get your shit together, man. And it's luckier for my language. But uh, it, it has to be said, you know. It says, uh, Then she, that is mine enemy. Oh, it's lucky. This is the book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 10. And it reads, Then she, that is mine enemy, shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is... Yahweh, thy power. Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. So it's going to be rough out here for you women. That's that's not a good thing. Being trodden down as the mire. You're going to be like dirt in the street. You're going to be like garbage. I mean, it's crazy, man. Absolutely crazy to think that. And And, and this is the reason why we say... That it's, it's important that you, you seek the Lord. I believe it's in the, the book of uh, Psalms 34 chapter. Um, yeah, so it says the angel of Yahweh encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. So if you ain't keeping the commandments, you don't fear the Lord, you know, and the angels of Yahweh in camp of around about them that fear him. So you need to come back to these commandments. It's as simple as that. And the last scripture I want to, I want to get, you know, because the, the men of the Lord have been telling you, and, and this is something that's prophesied because the men are getting themselves in order. The women, they want to just continue on this, this reckless path. The men are getting themselves in order. Not all the men. You want to find yourself a righteous man. Uh, but in that day, uh, I'm going to leave off with this. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 12. And it says, I will make a man, a righteous man, that is, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. So a man of the Lord is going to be more precious than fine gold because there's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of these threats. Uh, and dangerous men out there lurking for you women. You're going to be used as bargaining chips, uh, you know, for slavery. You know, you're going to be raped. You know, th there's going to be all kinds of, of wickedness happening to you. But a man of the Lord, you know, you if you you in subjection unto him, you know, you you submit to, to that man of the Lord. And, and, you know, he choose you and you become his wife. Then, you know... That's the only time you'll ever be, um, you'll ever be covered, and and Salakia, I'm just going to bring out one last scripture, because um, this this is uh, just off the back of what I've just said, and it reads, uh, this is the book of Isaiah chapter four verse one, and it says, and in that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel, only let us be called by thy name. To take away our reproach. Because the man of the Lord. Is going to be the only way. You know. If he be a part of the elect. You know. He's going to be the only way. You will receive any any type of salvation. You know. And none of us know. Who's guaranteed. Self Nobody's guaranteed salvation. It's of the most high. The most high. Which whom, uh, will have mercy on whom he will have mercy. So all we can do is keep the commandments. And pray that the Most High cover us in those days. So with that, I want to give all honor, glory and praise to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. I want to say Shalom to the hopeful elect.